In honor of the new release of the new MacBook Pros with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips, I decided it's probably time to make another desk setup video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I use on my desk with my new M2 Max MacBook Pro. Now, be warned, it's not the cleanest and it's not the prettiest, but it is functional for what I need. So let's get to it. Now, the first thing that you might notice is the way I have this set up with the laptop directly in front of me and the display behind it. Now, I've noticed that there's not a lot of other people that have desk setups just like this, and there's actually a reason why I do. In a previous video, I talked about my repetitive strain injury on my elbow, or RSI, and that is because what I found is the way I was using my computer with a mouse off to this side. The back and forth motion of going between the keyboard and the mouse with my right arm potentially thousands of times per day was causing some major issues and pain in my elbow. Now, I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but that's exactly why I have this setup to have the keyboard and the trackpad directly in front of me so I can keep my arms straight without having to go left and right. Then there's the benefit of having the larger display directly above the laptop display. Because now, again, I don't have to look left and right between dual displays. I have two displays right here and I just have to swivel my neck up and down, which alleviates some of the other stress I was having with my neck and back. Now, if you're somebody who would rather have your laptop in clamshell mode, or maybe you have a desktop setup with a Mac mini, so you don't have this option to have the laptop right in front of you. There's a device I found from a company called XD Design Studios that allows you to have a similar laptop setup right in front of you that again would work for me to alleviate my arm pain. But this clear acrylic plastic is an awesome base. It's essentially the same size as a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you want to get rid of your mouse, you can actually use something like this to do something very similar to what I'm doing. For my chair, I'm using this Herman Miller Aeron chair, and this is a pretty popular chair because it's really comfortable and it's adjustable in all kinds of different ways, but it is expensive, but you get what you pay for. Now the desk itself that I'm using is a large L-shaped desk from a company called Uplift. This is a rather large 72 inch by 60 inch L-shaped desk that has done wonders for my workability in this room. I finally have a single cohesive desk that I can use for my A-roll, which I usually film over here, and I have my workspace right here, and I don't have to go far to go back and forth. At one point, I had four desks inside this room, and it was just a cluster to try and move around between light stands and desks and products and boxes. It was just a terrible working space. So I'm really happy to now have one nice setup that gives me open space around here to move lights and stands without me tripping over them all the time. This whole desk setup is built around the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro with M2 Max. And I'm going to be doing a lot of tests and definitely review it. So hit subscribe if you wanna see that, but we're not gonna talk about it too much in this video. But this new 14 inch MacBook Pro, similar to the previous version, is exceptionally powerful for just about anything you can throw at it. I'm really excited to test this out over the next few weeks and see how it goes, but I have no doubt it's going to be a powerhouse of a computer. Now the 14 inch MacBook Pro is sitting on top of this wool desk mat from a company called Grovemade. I've tried a lot of desk mats over the years, leather and fake leather and plastic and just whatever, but this is the first desk mat that I've actually loved. This desk mat is exactly the right size for what I need. It perfectly works for the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's got the perfect texture for a mouse, if you're using one. It's great for setting drinks and cans and other things on so you don't have to worry about scratching your desk. And it's just really comfortable when you're not typing and relaxing or thinking to just have your hands on. They won't get sweaty like leather or pleather and it just, it feels really good. Now behind the Mac Pro is a 27 inch display and yes, this is the Apple Studio display. I have used a lot of displays in the last few years since I started this YouTube channel from cheap to mid-grade to expensive and by far, this is the best display I've ever used with a Mac. Now this doesn't have every feature imaginable. It doesn't have a high refresh rate. It doesn't have multiple display inputs and it doesn't have a KVM built in. There are other options out there for a display with those features. This just does not have it. What you do get with this display is a design unlike any other. The design of the studio display perfectly complements the Mac devices and there's just nothing else like it on the market. The display itself is gorgeous. It's 27 inches from corner to corner. It's a 5K resolution, which is almost 15 million pixels. It's got the full P3 wide color gamut. It gets up to 1600 nits of brightness. It's got a webcam built in and it's got speakers. And they're not ordinary crappy display speakers. This has a six speaker system built in and the sound is just surprisingly good. Normally, and in my previous desk, 
desk setup videos, I've been using the Kanto U2 speakers, which I absolutely love. Those are real speakers with real stereo separation that you can place anywhere in the room with regular speaker wire. And for my money, if you need desktop speakers, those are definitely the ones to get. Now I'm not using those in my current desk setup and just using the six speaker system built into the studio display. And that's more about trying to minimize what's on my desk right now, rather than saying that these speakers are definitely way better than any external speakers. I may bring those out again in the future, just if I get tired of not having that big full stereo separated sound. But for now, the speakers in the studio display are fantastic. So I guess we'll go left to right now for the rest. And over here on the left, I have a Belkin Boost Charge Pro charging up my iPhone 14 Pro and my AirPods. I love these Boost Charge Pros. I actually have the three-in-one charger on my nightstand next to my bed to charge my Apple Watch, my iPhone 14 Pro, and my AirPods. However, I like this two-in-one version for my desk. It's a really simple design with the stainless steel and the white. And because this is the two-in-one instead of the three-in-one, it's a bit more compact, which fits perfectly on my desk. Plus, I charge my Apple Watch at night and I don't need to really worry about it. This is the AirPods Pro second generation, and these have quickly become my favorite AirPods ever. For a while, I was using the AirPods Gen 3, which I really liked the feel of. However, when these came out, I just had to try that noise cancellation and the better transparency mode that was on these. And these are just so great. I use them basically all the time. They're almost a part of me. They're in my pocket no matter where I go. I can leave home and forget my wallet, but I have to have my AirPods in my phone. Now with the iPhone 14 Pro, this is actually the Pro Max. I've had this for about three or four months and I need to do a long-term review on it, but Short story is, this is a fantastic phone. It's really hard to beat the overall package of design, build quality, the cameras, and the software features. This is definitely one to check out if you're ready for an upgrade. And while we're at it, this is the Magic Stand case from CaseQ, and CaseQ is sponsoring this video. This is a beautifully designed case for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. The case looks great and also provides plenty of protection for the front glass and the rear cameras. The secret to the Magic Stand case is the hidden stand built right into the ring in the back. This stand can hold your iPhone up between 40 and 120 degrees to get the perfect angle for watching video or having a FaceTime call. There's also 48 magnets in the ring, which allow the Magic Stand to work with all of your MagSafe chargers and accessories. Check out the link and discount code in the description below to save 10% on your Magic Stand case. Next up is one of those accessories that you just can't build a desk setup without, and that is my CalDigit TS4 dock. This is a Thunderbolt 4 dock, which has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, along with multiple USB-C ports, USB-A ports, SD card readers, audio in and out, display out, and even 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Also, I love the front SD card ports on the TS4 because I find it's actually faster than the built-in port on the Mac, which is also a pain to actually get cards in sometimes. But I can also use both of them at the same time to get footage off my cameras quickly. Now, most Thunderbolt 4 hubs that I've seen only come with two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one to connect the MacBook and one to connect to a display or an SSD. The TS4 has three, so you can connect a display, your MacBook, and an external SSD, or even like a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. I've had the TS4 for over a year now, and I've had zero issues. I know there were some reports of people having connectivity issues or hard drives dropping out and things like that, but CalDigit has released firmware updates for that, so that should be fixed. And again, I've never experienced any of that. Now, speaking of Thunderbolt 4 and SSDs, this is something I usually have connected either to the CalDigit dock or to my MacBook itself, and that is an NVMe drive inside of a NVMe to Thunderbolt 4 case. The enclosure I'm using is from a company called Acasis. This is a USB 4 drive, which means it gets up to 40 gigabits per second, and it's completely backwards compatible with other USB versions. And if we open this up, you'll see that inside, I have this four terabyte, 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 four terabyte. I have this four terabyte Sabrent Rocket Q NVMe drive that just slides in here. These two devices together are stupid fast. They get over 2,500 megabytes per second in read and write, and it's way fast enough to do basically anything. I've ran just about everything off of this SSD over the about a year or so that I've had it, and it's never hiccuped once. It's incredibly fast. It rarely has any slowdowns due to heat or anything like that. I definitely recommend this NVMe drive and this USB 4 case. If we slide all the way to the right side of my desk, I do have this Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. When I do need a precision pointing device, which is not all that often, but when I'm doing thumbnails and other things like that, sometimes I do want a precision device and this MX Master 3 is the best mouse that I've found for using with a Mac and for the things that I do. As far as feel in the hand goes, 
this is probably one of the most comfortable mice I've ever used. I really love this mag speed scrolling. This basically gives you zero friction and can scroll super fast. It works a lot like the inertia scrolling that Apple has on their devices. And there's also this side scroll wheel that is really good if you're doing some kind of video or audio work and need to go left and right on the display. The scroll wheel for your thumb on the side can help you quickly fly left and right between timelines. This mouse looks a little beat up and it's because I've used it a lot over the last couple of years. So if this mouse died today, I would definitely go out and get another one of these to replace it. Over here, I do have the M1 iPad Pro. Yes, that is the M1 iPad Pro because I felt no reason to get the M2 version. So this is the 12.9 inch version with cellular and 256 gigabytes of storage. I like to use it on the side of my display for certain apps I use while I'm working. So when I'm working my regular day job, I have to use things like Outlook and Teams. And I just find that some of those apps just work better on the iPad than they do on the Mac. Of course, to do that, I am using universal control. So I can just swipe my mouse all the way over to the iPad. And now I have the same mouse and keyboard from my laptop controlling it on the iPad. And so I can scroll through and open apps and you get all of the regular mouse gestures that you get with iPad OS by using universal control. And if universal control is not your thing, you can always use Sidecar with the iPad as well and turn the iPad into another display for your Mac. The iPad is actually sitting on this magnetic stand from El Lago. This stand is the most Apple-like design on a third-party product I've ever seen. It looks exactly like the stand on the M1 iMac or even the regular tilt-adjustable studio display. It blends in perfectly with any Apple desktop device. And because it's magnetic, it is really easy to attach and detach. You can just pop off the iPad. So say you want to relax or sit back and take a Teams call, you can take this with you or just sit back in your chair. You can doodle while you're on a call or you can fly through email and get to inbox zero, which I don't think I've ever gotten to. But when you're done and you come back to your desk, it's easy to just pop right back on the stand and get back to work. Or you can play some Call of Duty after a frustrating meeting to get some anger out. So that's the main part of my everyday desk setup. I got my computer, my display, my second display, I got my dock, and I got my chargers for my devices. Now over in the corner, I do have just a couple of items as well. I do have a 10 gigabit Ubiquiti switch along with an access point. I also have a base model M1 Mac mini, which is used as a content cache for downloading files. So there's actually a feature built into Mac OS called content caching. So if you have a device that's always on your network and ready to go, it can become a content cache for iCloud and Apple software updates. It's really cool because if you have a lot of devices that need to download updates or sync iCloud data, the content cache will kind of keep copies of that so you only have to download it or upload it once. So for example, when the new iPhone update comes out, the content cache will actually download it the first time that it gets requested. Then any other device in your household that needs that update will actually just pull it off of the content cache, saving you a bunch of bandwidth on your internet service. Now you can see that over the last 30 days, I've saved 60 gigabytes of download bandwidth and only needed to actually pull 13 gigabytes from Apple's servers. And that's a substantial savings depending on the internet plan that you have. Along with content caching, I also have a full copy of my Apple Photos library on this CalDigit Tough Nano Plus, which then gets backed up online. So I guess that's about it for my brand new desk setup for my new M2 Max MacBook Pro. Yeah, that's all of it. I probably will end up changing this again because that's just what I do and adding new things or maybe I'll bring my speakers back, but let me know below. What type of desk accessories do you use for your desk setup? And is there something that I might be able to benefit from? Let's talk. Now, if you're interested in seeing my review of this new 14-inch MacBook Pro, definitely hit subscribe. And if you're interested in anything Apple related, you're gonna wanna check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.